Welcome back everyone, Mean Poo here, and today I'm going to go over the MSI Dragon Center 2.0, and this comes with their newer gaming laptops. The first tab is called System Monitor. Within this, you have the CPU information, which tells you a usage percentage. Under that, there is a details button that gives you the temperature. Next, you have the GPU, which gives you some usage information. Clicking detail will give you temperature. In addition, you have core clock and memory clock. Next over, you have memory. The number is the percentage used and clicking the free up button will most likely remove programs that are still in memory that you are no longer using and have closed. Lastly, we have the disk tab. This gives you information on your disk, meaning if your drive is having any activity, such as file transfer or installations. If anything is accessing your drive, you will see the percentage number adjust. Pressing the cleanup disk button will start Windows disk cleanup application. On the bottom, there is the device information section. Here you can see the type of CPU, GPU, how much memory, and how full your drive is. On the right side, you have loading status. This gives you the type of power plan you are using and lets you know if your ethernet is moving information. Under that, you have Wi-Fi, which does the same thing as ethernet by providing transfer speeds, internet and intranet activity. Over to the right, you have the RPMs for the two fans in the machine. The next area is the system tuner. At the top, you will see a row of profiles. Starting from the left, there is the current profile, which lets you adjust the most options. Performance profile, I believe, pushes your GPU the hardest. Next is the theater profile, which turns down the GPU a bit, changes the music sound and fan speed. Meeting uses less power than all of the profiles. And again, music, color, fan speed are all changed for each profile. The last two profiles are custom and let you adjust to your liking. Let's make a test profile. Click profile one and give it a name. I'm gonna call mine Mean Poo. You can also change the profile icon by clicking the pencil. This picture is 176 by 176. You can also choose a 1920 by 1080 res photo as well. I tried for the hell of it and you know what? It worked, so <laughs> cool with that, no crashes. Heading over to the shift, we will change the setting to turbo. Clicking the configuration wheel will allow us to adjust the core and VRAM clock offset. I'm gonna add 25 megahertz to each. Click save and you will get a warning. Read the information and confirm. If you want, you can undo, which will cancel the operation. Below shift, we have fan speed. The auto setting is system controlled. Choosing basic will bring up a simple slider that you can adjust from slow to fast. Cooler boost will put your fans on turbo at all times. This is similar to what you would see in a desktop motherboard BIOS or if you are using liquid cooling software. The zones are preset and there is no way to tell what the temperatures are. I'm only going to assume that from left to right would be room temperature to heavy load. So temps from 25C to say 85 to 90C. You adjust the slider by moving up and down. This is the percentage of speed to the fan. 
So at a cool temp, we could leave it at zero since we don't need any fans at the time. Plus it would just cut out the wear and tear. The next I have numbered 50, 60, 70, 80, and 90 C zones. You can adjust accordingly. You will want to increment to have the fan spin faster the hotter the CPU becomes. Clicking the GPU tab lets you do the same thing. I'm going to move them up a bit from stock. When you are done, click save. Moving over to Nahemic, we will set this to the gaming configuration. Next is True Color. This will determine the color profile of the monitor. We'll set this also to Gamer. On the bottom, you will see Launch App. This is handy if you have a secondary app that you would want to launch when you choose this, a certain profile. For instance, if you play Elite Dangerous a lot, you could have this profile to automatically load the game and voice attack so you can give voice commands to your AI. You can load up to four programs. You will have to experiment with this as loading four apps at the same time might cause some performance issues on startup. You could also just keep it disabled as we are going to do. When you are done, just click save. If you want to use the profile, click apply. I had an issue where I had to choose another profile, click apply, then go back to my custom profile and apply that one. You can also get a confirmation that your profile is working because your screen color will change and you will see a brief icon of your selected profile on the bottom right. If you feel like you may have messed up your profile or want to erase it, just click the default and it will reset it back to the way it was. The next tab we are going to visit is the tab called Battery Master. This will let us set up how we want to use the laptop battery. Options are as follows. Best for mobility. This charges your battery to 100%. This is standard on almost every laptop you may have ever owned, including your phone. Balance mode will just charge it up to 80%. Then as soon as it goes under 70%, then it will charge. I think this option will stop the charge cycle before it hits full capacity so people that may be using a stronger charger or one from another computer brand will prevent it from damaging the battery by overcharging. This is just my opinion and I could be totally wrong. Best for battery will charge your machine up to 60% and then once it drops under 50 it will resume charging again. Apparently, this is the best setting for the battery, which might have something to do with lithium batteries. After further reading on the internet, this is what I found. Lastly, we have battery calibration. This will help keep your battery running in tip-top shape from all the charging and depletion. The next section we are moving to is called gaming mode. This will optimize your computer from adjusting power and graphics to lighting up hotkeys on your laptop. I've tried it and it works. I don't know about the power adjustments, but everything else such as hotkeys and sounds work as advertised. There's no way to add a game manually, so I'm guessing the support is either built into the software or it scans your drive when the software is loaded. As you can see, it's turned on, but it also says not running or installed. The next section is called Voice Wizard. I currently have it off, but to turn it on, just toggle the button on the top left. This software lets you manage the voice over IP and game volume proportions. It will make sure that one is not louder than the other and everything is heard natural and clear. Supported software will vary and will let you select it from the drop down list. This is very useful for Discord and Skype. Currently, Steam is selected on my machine, but if you open the drop down list, you will see a list of installed software that is compatible. The section on the right lets you adjust the ratio. Do you want to hear more games and less voice? Move it to the right. If you want to do the opposite, 
adjust it just a slider the other way. Our next section is Mobile Center. This will let you use a mobile device to adjust settings while you are in game. First toggle the button to enable it on the top left. On the far right you will see a download icon. Click it and scan the appropriate QR code with your mobile device and it will take you to the download store. Next, open your app and scan the QR code on the left side of the screen. If you get prompted to let it through your firewall, give it permission. If you notice on the right side, the connection status is in connect mode. Line up the code in the crosshairs and if all goes well, you will be connected. The connection status will now say connect successful. On your mobile device, you will see the system monitoring tab which will give you all the information you need. Fan speeds, transfer speeds, temperatures, etc. If you do not want to see a roll, just hit the edit icon on the top right and uncheck the desired roll. The second tab from the right or the middle tab is called system tuner. And just like on the main machine, you can adjust profiles on the fly. You can select any profile by just touching it. If you want to edit lightly, Click the tab that says Current. Now you can click the drop down to adjust the setting. So if we chose Fan Speed and changed it from Auto to Cooler Boost, it will take effect immediately. You will hear it and you can go to the System Monitoring tab and see the RPMs have increased. If you choose a setting you do not want, just change it back. The last row on the bottom is for volume, which will adjust your computer sound. The far right tab called Dragon Dashboard 2.0 will let you rate the app, go to an MSI forum, which is unfortunately looks to be offline or something. I let this go for a good three minutes to no avail. Your last option will let you disconnect from the app. Our last section on the right is called Tools and Help. Here you can make recovery disks and I recommend you do so as soon as possible. You have a choice between DVDs, duplicate ISOs, and USB drive recovery. Clicking the button will start the process. Moving over you have access to the user manuals. Clicking this will take you to the partitions that have the PDFs. Product registration will take you to the website to, of course, register your machine. It's probably a good idea to do so as soon as you can. Most people don't even bother until something is wrong with their hardware. Battery calibration is also listed on this screen and it's located in the middle and it will run some tests on your battery to optimize it. According to MSI, you should run this every three months. On the very bottom, you have recommended apps. Clicking this will bring up the software management screen. Apps I have installed are the MSI app, which lets you play mobile applications. I'm sure that's what that is. Still Series lets me control the lights on my keyboard any way I want. True Color adjusts your panel color to your liking possibly useful for watching movies or working in Photoshop and trying to match up the color profile. I almost forgot. On the top right, you will see the picture of a dragon. If you click him or her, it will run you through a tutorial to set up your power profile. And now we've come to the end. If this video helped you, feel free to like and subscribe. I have a link to this machine in the description box. And I'll see you next time. Mean Poo, out.